Hi everybody! In this tutorial you will learn 5 very interesting advanced tips to apply within texts. So let's not lose time and start right away! Insert text height is not showing on the command bar. Not sure if this happened to you. But sometimes, when we are creating a text object, let's say a single line text, for example, we realize that it prompts directly to set the rotation angle of the text without asking for the text height previously. This happens when our current text style has a specific height defined in its properties. So, in this situation, we are on the style floor plan labels. And the text style you can see here it's defined as 500. So let's cancel this first. I'm going to access the text style properties. And you can see the height here for floor plan labels is defined as 500. On the other hand, the standard style, let's click on it. Remember that it prompts to specify a text height on screen due to the fact that the value here is set as 0. So memorize this. Now let's go back to floor plan labels and I'm going to change the height to zero, apply the changes and close. Finally on the workspace, after activating the command single line text, the first prompt is to specify the height. Even the default one is 500. I can press enter to use this one or change to a different one if I want. How to convert multi-line text to single line text and vice versa. Ok, I am going to insert a multi-line text object. For the text style, I am going to use standard and if you look at the label there, you can see it's the current style. Type the alias T. Press enter and then click anywhere to start defining the window that I want to fit the text in. And now, as this style doesn't have a specific height already defined, I can change it here if I want. So let's set 150 for example. Ok, now let's place 3 lines of text. And as my point is just to explain to you how this works, I'm going to put text 1, text 2 and text 3. Finally, click anywhere to confirm the multiline text. Now, imagine that later I decided to separate each line, so this is very easy. You just need to explode it. And from now on, we have three single line text objects here. Now, the other way around. In this file, I have this floor plan and in each room, I added a label as two single line texts with different heights each. One is for the name of the room and the text below indicates the area in square meters. So it's also possible to merge both on a M text and there is a command for that. Its name is, a bit complex by the way, txt2mtxt. Yes, it's strange, but actually it's not hard to memorize as it means text to M text. But don't worry, because once you type the first two letters, it shows up on the command list. Then you press enter and notice that the texts became a bit closer. And the reason is to follow the spacing that is defined in a multiline text between each lines. Ok, this is a multiline text now. And if you double click on it, you can access the text editor as usual for changing the settings if needed. Another thing, this tool still works even if the objects are displayed randomly around the screen. The only problem is when applying text to M text, they may not organize how we expect. So you have to do it manually. Simple. Enclose text in object. Now look at the labels that we had on the floor plan but to simplify the things, I copied them to an empty space here because I think it's easier to understand properly how this tool works. Ah, and to be even better, 
Let's move also the areas, which are in a smaller size, a bit below. Now, let's switch to the Express Tools menu, and specifically at the text panel. These are basically some advanced operations regarding texts, and there, look, there is also this command, the txt to mtxt, that I was focusing earlier in this video. But okay, what we need now is this button in close to object. I'm going to click on it, then I select all the objects, press enter, and then the first prompt is to insert an offset factor. And be aware that this is not a distance, it's just a factor that still has in consideration the size of the text. As a first attempt, I'm happy with this one value, so I press enter, and for the type of object, let's go for rectangle. Then we have here two options, constant and variable. And to understand better the difference, there is nothing like seeing the result. I click on variable, and now the object size differs according to the length and size of each text. So that's why the rectangle in bedroom 1 is wider than in bath. If I choose constant instead, then there is another box asking me what I want to maintain constant, if the width, the height or both. So this time I'm going to choose both, and now all the rectangles are exactly the same, even the ones around the areas whose text height is smaller. Basically the system takes the largest rectangle and places it around the remaining objects. Now let's look what happens when we change the offset factor. If I set it to 5, the objects become bigger. The only problem is that it's maybe hard to guess the size that the object will have, unless you have a lot of practice. But you can try a few times until you find the value that you are looking for. Finally, there are two more types of objects that we can use, circles and slots. And the available settings are exactly the same as for the rectangles. One last thing. The text and object keep their independence in a way that, in this situation, the circle is not following the text if I change the text size. This was something, when I was exploring this command, I didn't understand what variable and constant meant. I thought when we change the text height, or the text itself, the object would adapt to the new size, but it didn't. Actually, variable and constant only works for a multiple text selection. Mirror text. In AutoCAD, by default, text objects are not mirrored when we use that command to make a symmetric copy of a specific drawing. As you will see in this situation, the texts are copied but without inverting the letters, just because I think most of the time we don't want that to happen. However, if in a hypothetical situation we need to display the text backwards, we only need to change the system variable mirror text. Press enter and here we have two options. If I set zero, which is the mode by default, the text is not mirrored. So, to enable this ability, I set 1, press enter, and now if I apply the command mirror to these objects at the right, look that now the texts are backwards. Insert a field in a text. This is a very interesting and useful advanced option available in AutoCAD. A field is basically a way to insert data that we expect to change during the cycle of a drawing. Ah, this is actually the definition that you can see on the Autodesk website, by the way. As an example, I provided to you this file where I have attached an image from a satellite view of a part of a town right in the center of Africa. Now, suppose the image is already scaled to have its real proportions in meters the unit I specified for this project. Now I'm going to add a polyline to measure a specific area. Let's make it around these houses, and the accuracy here is not very important, I just want to show you how this works. 
Then let's add a text object and I will type for it area of the terrain with the current value displayed here and the main point is that the area updates automatically if I decide to change the size of that polyline. So I right click with the mouse and go to insert field. In this window from the category list we can add data and time that could be useful for a layout sheet among other options. Let's pick up objects and then press this button to select a specific object which in this case is this polyline. I click on it and then at the right section there are several parameters that we can display. Let's choose area and at the section at the right first we can see a preview of the result above and this means it's going to be 3248 square meters. Then here we can choose the format. At this moment decimal is fine for me. Below it's the precision. And in additional format we have extra options like conversion factor. In case we need to display the result in a different unit than the one I set for the project. And an additional text. For example, I can add an indication of square meters as a suffix. Click on OK and close the window. Now the area is displayed within the text. Also notice that the values are showing highlighted, but don't worry in case you want to print, as on the paper this rectangle around the number will not appear. Finally, as I mentioned before, the great thing of using fields is that I can change the area of the polyline and the value updates automatically. Ok, sometimes we have to save the drawing and open it again to notice the change. But you can always use the command regen to update the value in this precise moment. Ok, it looks like we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Cadding Black. There you can find all the content of tutorials for beginners. See you on the next occasion.